Good evening, folks. It's Diamond with the Oppenheimer Ranch Project, Magnetic Reversal News, Sacred Geography, and Shinrin Yoku, bringing you a grand solar minimum update Saturday, August 5th, around 7.45 p.m. Mountain Time, 2023. A very large X 1.6 solar flare ejected from active region 3386 just moments ago. Strong R3 level radio blackout. More coverage on the flare later in the show. Keep calm. It's boom time. Massive August storm to trigger severe weather across the Midwest and the Northeast like a beast. Tornado warnings issued across southern Colorado today. Isolated storms remain Saturday evening. And a funnel cloud was even spotted near Colorado Springs. Take a look at that in the distance Clearly not making contact with the ground, but a funnel cloud nonetheless. Here's the full forecast. Excessive heat across the southern U.S., severe thunderstorms and heavy rain in the central U.S. Dangerous heat persists across much of the southern tier of the country. Severe thunderstorms producing damaging gusts, large hail, and flash flooding are expected across much of the plains into parts of the Midwest late afternoon and evening. Fire weather concerns are expected across the southern high plains, the Four Corners region, and the Pacific Northwest and Alaska. So heads up, it's going to be hot in summer in the south. Who would have thunk it? Here is the forecast. GFS, you can see those thunderstorms in the center of the country. They're going to be moving east Sunday and into Monday. Those systems will end up on the east coast, blowing up in the northeast Monday and into Tuesday morning. Take a look at this overnight. Major thunderstorms moving through Pennsylvania, the Delmarva, New York State, and most of New England all the way up to Maine. It's insane. Here's Tuesday with those thunderstorms lingering as they move up into Halifax and eastern Canada. Seismic updates. Some big rumblers just happening. 5.3 in Durham, Afghanistan. We've also got some activity popping off. 4.4 in Pedro Bay. Hey, hey. And some activity on the mid-ocean ridge as the Earth continues to enlarge. 5.4, 5.3 in the mid-Atlantic ridge. And a big rumbler, 6.2 at a very great depth in Argentina. So hopefully this isn't a precursor of a big shock here over on the fault. Definitely something big happening at depth at that subduction zone. So stay tuned for potentially a big boom in South America. The seismicity in Iceland has all but shut off in the last 12 hours, and that's because the volcanic eruption is coming to an end. As predicted four days ago, we said in about a week, and we are right on point. Should be another two days, and this baby will be out. No seismic activity beneath the volcano, just those three rumblers. And here we can see the volcanic tremor just in the last, let's say, 11 hours, completely shutting down. And that probably means that this tiny eruption Phase three of the Reykjanes eruption has come to a close. We're a Y Volcano News Update. We've got, let's refresh this to make sure it's the most current information. Fuego to 15,000, seven Kaya to 23. It looks like my own also puffing, no distance there. Let's take a look. Abiko to 12,000. Sakurajima, take a look at this. The explosive eruption of the volcano continues. That's pretty impressive. And there's a city right below this. So can you imagine? Nerves of steel to live there. semi Sapochnoi alert status has been lowered. And Shishaldin had another episode today. The sixth paroxysm since they began about a week ago. Dense ash emissions up to 9.5 kilometer ash column. Alert status was quickly raised to red and then back to orange as activity decreased. So Shishaldin is not done puffing and passing. After nine days after the recent paroxysm, the sixth such episode of continuous ash emissions occurred at the volcano, according to Alaskan Volcano Observatory. And that is impressive. Ubaina still in the picture. Santo Huito to 15,000. Fuego to 16. Anakchiak Volcano. No information there. Nevado de Ruiz to 23,000. Ubainas to 24. Katmai. Lots of new volcano names here. Wow. So quite active on the volcano front. Now, it's also active on our sun, albeit just a few sunspots peppering the disk here. It's the ones that turn around the limb after the earth facing quiet that get active, which is, means no threat to earth. And you can see here that major X 1.6 solar flare coming from active region 3386. 
In fact, a strong 1.6 solar flare with an R3 level radio blackout was observed around AR3386 approaching the West Lamb. The flare itself was long in duration with a peak flux at 22, 21 UTC. Early indications are that the coronal mass ejection will be associated with this event. And due to the location towards the West Limb, most of the ejected material will be directed away from our planet. Good news. But there could be a glancing blow, and coronagraph imagery won't be available for a few more hours. So in the morning, we will be able to determine if a glancing blow will be possible. This is the fifth strongest solar flare of the current solar cycle in terms of peak X-ray flux. And after the rapid peak in geomagnetic activity from a weak shift in the BZ. This wasn't even plasma density or speed. This was just a shift in the BZ sending us almost to KP7. Well, the Earth is in quite a vulnerable state. And if in fact an X1.6 had been faced at Earth or something even larger approaching X40, well, it could be lights out in many regions. So don't be scared. Be prepared. We're going to have some warning before the big event fries any portion of the grid. Now, an interstellar shout restores NASA's contact with the lost Voyager 2 spacecraft. Many people were worried that it was the end of the scientific experiment that started decades ago when I was born, in fact. NASA's Voyager 2 was lost in space because of a mixed signal, but a command of the interstellar shout and beamed across billions of miles, has restored contact with the spacecraft after two weeks of silence. Good news. Voyager 2, which left Earth nearly 46 years ago, stopped receiving or transmitting communications in July when controllers accidentally sent a command that shifted its antenna two degrees away from Earth. Hello. I wonder if anybody's fired. This week, NASA's Deep Space Network, which consists of a giant radio antenna around the world, picked up a carrier signal from the spacecraft or what the emission team likened to a heartbeat that was too faint to pinpoint the probe, but confirmed it was still operating, according to the U.S. Space Agency. So engineers tried to send the spacecraft a command to orient itself back at Earth, and they used the highest power transmitter, transmitter at NASA's huge dish in the Australian capital, Canberra according to NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, and they did it. It may have been a long shot, but they heard back. We shouted 12.3 billion miles into interstellar space, instructing it to turn its antenna back to Earth, the laboratory said Friday, and after 37 hours, we found out it worked. And boy, did they get lucky. <laughs> and I'm getting a little plucky. Now, superconductor levitates at room temperature. We broke this story when it came out, but the video they showed didn't show actual superconductive levitation. It showed more like magnetism. And questions still remain after more spooky videos are released from the Wuhan University of all places. Let's take a look at the levitating piece. I wish I knew how to blow this up. Is it that it? Did we do it? Yes. All right. So bear with me. All right, here we are. And there we can see that tiny piece of LK99 levitating above the double magnet in free space. And it's holding its position. So, and many people are questioning if this is a trick or if this is actual room temperature superconductivity. It appears to me to be probably a trick. And coming from the Wuhan lab, it's anybody's guess. Because we know what came from the Wuhan lab prior to LK99. Now don't we? In just a few moments over at Magnetic Reversal News, Leah and I are going to be breaking open one of the biggest exposés on paleoclimate and historical climate temperature data ever monetized on the internet. Albeit, we do have a climate change moniker here from the UN. The medieval warm period has recently come into the headlines where scientists are claiming that tree rings reveal it has not been this warm in the last 1,200 years. But in fact, proxy data and the temperature data show otherwise. 
In fact, it's been much warmer, not only in the medieval warm, but even warmer in the Roman warm and even warmer in the Minoan warm. So join us over at Magnetic Reversal News. Well, for the effing awesome classroom, which begins in just a few minutes. And that's a boom to knowledge. Please share this video as we are shadow banned and we need your help to grow. And whatever you guys are doing, the last five videos we've produced have hit it through the park. We have increased views, increased subscribers, so keep it up. Become a Patreon, support the work we do, and watch all of our productions commercial free. And we'll see you in a few minutes over at Magnetic Reversal News for the next boom to knowledge. Be safe. We love you. Mm.